Hello and welcome to this episode of FinPAC Spotlight where you get a behind the scenes look at some of our shows that we air here on Access 21 and meet some of our producers. And in the studio with me tonight for some behind the scenes action is Mr. Joe Edwards of Clay Wright Workshop. Okay. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Good. You look good. You brought some nice we did. I heard Displays. that we were going to do a bit of a demonstration here tonight. Yes. So I brought some uh, final products so we'll know what the destination is and where we're headed. Mm -hmm. And fish are the most fascinating creatures on the planet. There are yes. more of them than anything else. Oh, okay, the, yeah. They're over 70% well, of the world is covered in water. Yeah. And then uh, people always think sharks are deadly or fish are deadly. Deers kill more people annually than sharks. Wow, well... I can see that. And they think that the uh, the pir piranha fish, oh, that's so dangerous. Mm -hmm. There is no documented case of it ever killing a swimmer. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things we think we know about fish, we don't, just mm -hmm. like politics and marriage. You think you know, but you don't. You are All so right. funny. Nah. Well, I, I agree with what you said. I can relate to the fact that deer probably you know, can cause more danger because they're right here with us. They're walking, and we have to go into the territory of the fish to encounter we those are dangers that might guests be there. in their house. Right, yes. mm -hmm. right. Well, I like the fact that we have some fish here that are nice to have in the home and, you know, for display. But I want to talk to you about the industry altogether. But before that, before the show, we were talking a little bit about what you did before you got into doing sculptures. Uh, so tell the viewers a little bit about that. Most of the things that happen in my life have not been by plan. Okay. By happenstance. Mm -hmm. And I just have gone with the flow. Mm -hmm. uh, I lucked in. Uh, I didn't plan to go to college or art school, although I loved art from an early age. Mm -hmm. But strangely enough, this wealthy lady passed away, and she wanted to do something with her monies. Bless her. And yeah. her three sons had all died uh, tragic deaths, car accidents, mm. and so forth. Yeah. And so she wanted to uh, give her monies to help young men go to college. Okay. Okay, that's very nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, well, the athletes always get scholarships and the academics get scholarships, but her boys had been rowdy boys. So she wanted to give money to boys that wouldn't go because they weren't jocks or, or, or academic. Okay. So she and her lawyer came up with a plan to find uh, the young man uh, with the highest IQ and the lowest grades uh, in each school. Oh. Otherwise, he wouldn't go to college without her benefits. Okay. So in my school, I held the unique honor of the highest IQ with the lowest academic grades. Okay. So I was a test guinea pig. And every year I stayed in college, they gave out some more. Uh, until my, when I graduated, they would give out eight. Okay. So I had to stay in college, et cetera in order to help those coming behind me. And that was called the Hyatt Memorial Foundation Scholarship, okay. Okay. sometimes known as the Redneck or Juvenile Delinquent Scholarship. Mm -hmm. So I won that, and that's how I went to art school. I went to a community college to get the grades up, and then I went to East Carolina University, mm -hmm. and I graduated on Dean's List, so their program worked. Mm -hmm. And then my uh, professor, we had become friends, and he got a sabbatical to go to Europe to okay. photograph the art history museums for the university, and he was going to travel by motorcycle to make it cheaper. I was in the motorcycles at the time, and it was photographs, and I was the uh, minor in photography. Okay. So he decided I'd be a good traveling buddy, and we bummed around Europe all summer, 16 countries, wow. photographed everything. So I got a real good background in art history, again, by not Life, by design, by, by being in the wrong place at the right time. Oh, my. Okay. And then when I came to Charlotte as an art teacher, mm -hmm. uh, they were short some teachers. Mm -hmm. The city was growing, and they wanted to get art teachers and drama teachers that had more of a physical ed background because we were dealing with some of the non-academic students. Okay. My name came up on the computer because at that time I was a registered professional boxer, and I was working part-time as a bouncer. The, I actually got the phone call in the bar while I worked to come and interview for a job in Charlotte. Okay, Again, okay. So that's how I ended up here, long way around. Okay, well it sounds like there was a balance between your physical ability and having been in boxing to deal with these young people who were rowdy and then art. I 
again, uh, I guess all of us are as unique as our fingerprint, but in my youth, my mother was a psychiatric nurse. Okay. And I lived on the campus of the largest mental institute in the state. Wow. So I grew up around people that were mentally, physically challenged. Mm -hmm. So it didn't seem so strange to me like it did some people that had never been exposed to that. Mm -hmm. And then working in boxing and bouncing, I dealt with a lot of people that weren't your standard in the middle of the road academic oriented. Okay. So it gave me a bit of help in understanding some of the troubled youth, and I had been the award-winning troubled youth okay. from my community. You knew from experience. <laughs> yeah, so uh, maybe that gave me some help along the way. All right. Well, um, it sounds like you were, here you were dealing with boxing and dealing with your hands in that way. When did you start using your hands for more creative things like pottery? Correct. Thank you. Uh, that's an interesting way to ask it or think about it. Mm -hmm. I had done, you have to, to get your degree, uh, painting, drawing, pottery, sculpt, everything. Mm -hmm. Master, of, jack of all trades, master of none. Mm -hmm. And when I first started teaching, the same young people that I mentioned that were not academically oriented, mm -hmm. they were kinesthetic learners. Uh -huh. They needed to touch something uh -huh. to remove from abstract to real. Okay. So when they started manipulating clay and throwing on the wheel, mm -hmm. they really became attuned and they needed help or would ask for help when they had been rejecting it before. Right. Authority is bad. Mm -hmm. And so when I was able to help them, we started doing uh, not little ashtrays and cutesy things, but big projects. Mm -hmm. And we did life-size giraffes in my classroom at wow. a paper mache and mm -hmm. carousel horses. And when was this? This was back in the early 70s. Okay. And these guys would come to school sick or whatever because they wanted to work on the big project. So mm -hmm. every year we kept a big project we could work on. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a an 1880s train mm -hmm. in my backyard with a real bell and a smokestack that we made in the classroom. Wow. And a bi-wing, war one fighting plane that had a Casablanca fan as a propeller. I bet your backyard is filled with all kinds of <laughs> um, claymation. So. Just last week, the paper came and photographed part of my backyard because there was a giant bulldog that is seven feet long and six and a half feet tall yeah. that I'm sculpting for Butler High School. Okay. And it, they did a nice color photo spread in the paper about mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So that's currently going on. And when people come, we have a festival in Matthews. Mm -hmm. I live in downtown Matthews. And they come, they've driven by my house hundreds of times going to Yuppievilles. And they... During the festival, I throw pots in the front yard, let children get the wheel throwing experience. Oh, okay. So people come and they line up down the block and we throw pots and they come back a week later and pick them up. And I've got a two-story art studio in my backyard. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know it was there. You don't see it driving by. And right. they flip out and then the backyard is full of giant mobsters and dragons and giraffes. Wow. And, and they flip out like I'm keeping a secret. No, it's there. I'm not hiding it, but there's no need to t wave and let everybody come over. It sounds like you have a Neverland in your backyard. It pretty well. A the Neverland. studio that I mentioned that was two stories. Yeah. My house is the oldest house in Matthews, built okay. in the 1880s. Mm -hmm. There was a twin house to it. I had a chance to buy it. Okay. For a hundred dollars. What? We in need to talk, okay. 2,000 square foot hour. Guy wow. that was, we were selling my wife's condo. The guy doing the job asked what I was going to do with the money, mm -hmm. and I said, I'm going to enlarge the room we're sitting in. It's an art studio. Mm -hmm. He said, if I could get you a house in Matthews for this money, would you buy it? I said, you can't buy a house in Matthews for $10,000. He said, if I could get it for you for $100, would you buy it tonight? And I said, you're jerking me around here. It's probably in a swamp somewhere. He said, tell you what, stand up. I stood up, he yeah. said, walk out your back door, just a couple of feet. He said, look to your right. And it was on the hill in the middle of town. Wow. And the people at B wanted to get the house off there so they could mm -hmm. put a public park there. Mm -hmm. okay. So he said, but we want to do it kind of quickly and quietly because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't want to lose any more of the old houses. Mm -hmm. So I bought the house and all the furniture in it for $100. I got some Boy Scouts and dropouts, and we spent the summer 
taking it down one board, one brick at a time, wow. bringing it down and rebuilding it in my backyard. Wow. So I have a two-story art studio in my backyard. It sounds amazing. And so I'm glad you brought at least this much to the studio tonight. And what I love about tonight is that you're going to allow me to get my hands dirty. Absolutely. Get some, some and clay when you say between dirty, my It's funny you should say dirty, but we're going to use white earthenware clay. Which okay. Is what this is made of. Okay. It is incredibly clean. It's been okay. filtered through a screen with 600 squares per inch. Okay. Okay. And it's properly pliable, mm -hmm. malleable, mm -hmm. love that word. Mm -hmm. We're going to sculpt with it, and if you do get a little on your hands, it'll wash right off just like Baptist removing your sins. Okay, perfect. Well, this is what we're going to do, everybody. If you guys will stay with us, we're going to be right back after this, and we'll see you on the other side. Why just watch TV? Make TV. Here at Access 21, we have two studios outfitted with all the equipment that you need in order to produce your own show for broadcast on our channel. For more detailed information, visit us at tvaccess21.com. We have the lights, the cameras, now you bring the action. And welcome back everybody. Now is the fun part where I get to put my hands in some clay and have an instructor extraordinaire show me exactly what I'm supposed to do. So welcome back. We have Mr. Joe Edwards in the studio with us from okay. Clay Wright Workshop. And take it away. I was looking for the instructor extraordinaire. Okay. <laughs> That's you. He's not here now, so I'll help you. Okay. Right. <laughs> what we have here is a 25-pound bag of white earthenware clay. Most uh, clays come in 25-pound bags. That's the way professionals the world over buy it. Okay. And I'm going to start us out by cutting us a slab. One of the things that I say too often, and my students quite often uh, get me for being so redundant, uh, and speaking more than once. But the, a good thickness for ceramics is about the thickness of a slice of white bread. Oh. A little thinner it breaks, a little thicker it might be holding air. Now I'm gonna hand you this, you put it right on top of the platform. That's Thank the you. hardest thing you have to do. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna cut one for me. No two will ever be exactly the same, just like people, but they will definitely be similar. I'm going to put mine down here, and I'll move this out of the uh, sight line. Okay. Now, whew, I don't like when a salesman or a teacher says, this is so easy, anybody can do it, etc., but I'm afraid it's the absolute truth, and it spooks people how easy it is. All right. Okay. I like now, hearing that. Easy. There in front of you is a piece of plastic that's square. This here? Here's a piece for me here. This makes a slight bit of noise, but the first thing I want you to do, lay that piece of plastic down, correct. Okay. Take your clay and throw it down smartly like I'm doing. Like that. Perfect. <laughs> now, watch. Wow. There's your off. fish scale. Wow. Was that hard? Nope. Okay. It's easy. You're going to love this part. Easy. Watch this. This is a square. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn it like a diamond. I'm going to take my hand, I'm going to shake hands with it. Watch me. Grab it right here, squeeze gently. Okay. Wow. Perfect. Oh, my little tail is... Perfect. Okay. All right, lay it down on your slab. Okay. This I call the blue stick. Don't ask me why. Okay. <laughs> now, this is a tool I invented, and pretty art teachers all over three states keep talking me out of them, and I'm down to a half a dozen, so I ain't letting go of another one. I got gotcha. you. This is like a clock radiating. Okay. Middle of the clock, we're going to radiate around the circle. I hope you can see this, but watch. Oh, wow. The fin. Now let the stick go off the project. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> we're like, how many, three quarters of the way done? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So now I need you're that. going to Okay. put your hand, yeah, that's perfect. Roll it across there. That's it. Perfect. Perfect. Wow. Good girl. I don't right. care what they say. You're pretty smart. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. I don't know how these rumors get started. Well, I tell you what. Don't say it too fast. Okay. Now, Remember do I go the, this way? Yeah, you go off. The, you head off oh, the page right. like a clock. Other way. Big stick that way. Yellow down. That'll do it. That'll do. 
That's it. Okay. Is that hard? That's not okay. too bad. This is nah. fun. Now, notice all these tools are simple so people like me can use them. I'm going to give the fish a smile. Okay. And I wrap around the front of the fish the way a belt wraps around my waist. Wow. There's How the mouth. How easy is that? Then I'm going to take my finger, put it where I want his eye to be, push in, and then push up. Wow, okay. Then I'm going to show you three things at once. Okay. The same magic blue stick. Fish can breathe underwater because of a special breathing apparatus called gills. Gills. Okay. It's actually called a gill cover, but here I go. You see, same way you did the fins? Mm-hmm. Amazing. <laughs> is that just way cooler? What? This is very cool. I do this cool. for elementary so children, much fun. and they just freak out. Oh, I didn't know I had this talent. It was laying... Uh, what is it? Dormant. Laying Inside dormant. Me. Yes. So laying dormant. let me check in with you. I need okay. to take this side of the you, stick, okay. right? First, for the mouth? Uh, well, this one, quarter round, okay. is what you do with to the smile mouth. with. And okay. it wraps across the front like that. Put yeah, any edge you want. And go Just, here. Yeah, press in and wrap it wherever you want the mouth to be. You got That's okay. it. Perfect. All right. Okay. Ooh, now ooh. go above it, stick your finger in and push it up, and that'll give you an eye and an eyelid. Piece of worthless trivia, the only fish with wow. an eyelid is your shark. <laughs> now, do the gill. You're gonna take the same blue stick and uh -huh. you see where we have the gill here? Yes. Same trick you did from before. Just Put go pressure around. on it, uh huh, and just go in a circle. Now, you wanna dig in along here somewhere. Okay. Yeah, on the edge, and okay. then roll it. Yeah, just like that. Come around and you got a gill. I don't know what I got. I think I'm butchered him. This okay, is. We like... can get it bigger, smaller, fish or same. That'll work. This pen here, my magic pen, <laughs> because we're going to use this part to make fins in a moment. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. I'm going to give you a piece of clay about this big. Okay. Here's what you're going to do. 1,001, 1,002, in two seconds, you're going to roll it around. Okay. Then, because uh, y'all have a lot of gravity here in the station, I noticed that. So, because of gravity, I'm going to drop it in the bottom of my hand. A thousand and one, a thousand and two, and I have a teardrop. You broke my heart, you silly savage. You. <laughs> now I'm gonna take this teardrop. I'm gonna throw it down flat. Okay. I'm gonna take the pin again, like you did the other, like the clock radiating. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's the pin. We're gonna do three. Okay. One. And literally, it takes about five seconds. Okay. Roll it round. One end skinny, one end fat. Throw it down like that. Take the pin. <laughs> like a clock radiating, like that. One, two, here's the third one. Some fish, these are large, some they're small. This is how they navigate through the water. Now I have three fins. I'm gonna take the same pin, yeah. take this tip off, this tip off, put a hole here. This is the pectoral gill. This is the pelvic gill. And this is the anal gill. Okay. And then I'm just going to take these, stick it in the hole, push it once. Stick it in the hole, push it once. Stick it in the hole, push it once. And wow. there are the fins. Wow, this okay. is amazing. Here you go. I'm going to help you out here. Okay. There is the uh, first one for you. Okay. One. Then I do now remember, like you roll it round. I'll do it again. Roll it round. Using the palms oh, of your hand, around. then drop your hands down, go back and forth, make one end skinny, one end fat, teardrop okay. shape, okay. throw it down flat, and your pin, like a clock going 12 to 1, radiates across the top. I did that one for you. I'll oh, let you do your you other so one. Thank you so much. I like uh, helping out pretty girls. It pays off. Oh, okay, well, that's go. so sweet. You s pretty girls. I'm looking around now. Who are you talking about? <laughs> uh huh. I'm still looking for the smart guy to come in. Okay. That's you. There's your other one. Thank you. You now, know it would take uh, me too take long. Take your uh, cap off your pen so you can make holes. Okay. And do one midway of the gill. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do one in the very front and one in the very back. Very back. All right. And just stick the point in there. Stick the point in the hole. It's all the way to it. And then press it down one time. That makes it stick. That's it. Then do the third one. Ta da.
It's come along. Now, remember that was mud about three minutes ago. I know, just a piece of bread, now, like Texas this. toast. You're going to love this. Okay. Now, yours and mine will look different because everybody looks different. Everybody is different. Yes. Viva la difference. Watch here. Nice. Okay. They radiate. Yes. Especially with them. And here I'm going to make water. this different. I'm going to, instead of coming out, I'm going to go in. Okay. You can do it any way you want to. So you're just being really creative. You're not trying to. Being to very creative. I'm not fish. trying to copy in particular fish. Okay. I okay. try to leave as much room as possible. Here's the, there's a pen for you right there. Okay. I leave as much room for the uh, students to uh, do it the way they want to do it and express themselves, etc. Okay. Some people like to be very big. Some like to be very small. Mm -hmm. uh, some conservative, some liberal. So okay. uh, I try to make sure that every child can uh, show their own style, or every student, rather. I do this with retirement homes, preschool, high school. Nice. Well, this really is, it's really relaxing, too. It really is, and it's good therapy. Yes. Uh, before I started this therapy, I wanted to uh, kill and maim. Oh. And now I just want to maim. So well, it really has helped me a lot. You just want to maim. <laughs> yeah, I'm improving so well, much. Do you still eat fish? <laughs> so much therapy. How's that looking? How do you think? What do not, you think? Well, not bad at all. Everybody. Okay, now I'm going to do this because I'm going to give this fish some attitude because somehow I'm picking up this lot of attitude in this room. Okay. I am going to roll a coil. Okay. I'm going to throw it down so it's flat on one side, and I'm going to wrap it down here around this lower lip. Ah, Got make him mad. Attitude. Okay, check out this attitude. Aha, my gosh. Okay, here's some. I've seen fish that look like Roll that. Roll that into a coil. Just okay. take your hands and do this. All right. Like a mustache. Uh-huh, very much. That's the okay. term I usually use. Yeah, that's perfect. Throw it down so it's flat on the back side. A lot of people love the throwing down part. Gives yes. a lot of hostility. That's right. And then just wrap it around that lower lip. Lower lip? Yeah. Go around the lower. Just wrap it around. Oh, here. Yeah. Like your belt going around your waist. Gotcha. And you'll see it'll have you. It can sn uh, sneer or frown or whatever the case might be. That made a big difference. Yes, it did. And the beauty of this fired clay is one of the most. Sounds like a bad joke again. Please trust me. One of the most permanent things on the face of the earth. Uh huh. Okay. Ceramics, because when we find the ancient civilizations, yeah, their cannons have rusted and their buildings have caved, and they find the crockery. Hmm. Because if the salt water won't dissolve it, mm -hmm. volcanoes won't mm -hmm. burn it up, etc. Mm -hmm. So ceramics is uh, we've got stuff forty thousand years old from I, civilizations. When you brought up the volcanoes, I can see where that would be your natural kill. Right? <laughs> it is. That's the concept of it. Yeah. This clay has to be reach a heat uh, 04, 06, which is about 1900 to 2000 degrees. Wow. And then the wet clay vitrifies, big show off word, <laughs> vitrifies, uh -huh. becomes like glass. Okay. Then you can put glaze on it and fire it again, and glaze comes in liquid, mm -hmm. but when you fire it in the kiln 04, 06, it turns into liquid glass. Wow. So we experiment because with paint you can try and wipe it with a damp cloth and get the colors to go down mm -hmm. or go over it or mix match and it's cheaper and faster and I work with a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. Patients, they've heard of it. They've heard they've the word. Heard of it. They're pretty sure they that it is it. something the government sends you with your second social security check or it was the name of a rock and roll group in the 60s. Oh my gosh. Otherwise they don't relate to patients. So Paint, acrylic paint, is instant gratification, mm -hmm. and the beauty of clay, it is permanent. Mm -hmm. These can go outside on decks and patios mm -hmm. in the weather, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they will last indefinitely, a lot longer than the marriage will. So you could hang these and decorate with them. Your wife's going to get you. She and does, And yes. speaking of your wife, you guys work together in your partnership, and so what does she do again? Uh, when we met blind date situation, mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine introduced us, uh, we're still talking. So, uh, her name is Linda okay. White. Mm -hmm. My name is Joe Rock Edwards. So mm -hmm. we named our business White Rock Studio. Yes. Linda had never made anything out of clay, never had an art class. So okay. I took her over to my school studio and I'm showing her and she made this gosh awful bunny rabbit like one of my seventh grade students would have made, mm -hmm. but because we were dating. 
I took and fired it, and she, it came out pretty good. She was very pleased. She put it on her desk. Mm -hmm. Linda has two degrees. One of them is in business. She put it on her desk, and a woman said, that's lovely. My daughter's name is Bunny. I'd love to have that. Mm -hmm. So she sold the first thing she ever made for $5 to this teacher friend. Okay. So she comes home that night, and she's talked to me. And I go, look, your friends will always tell you you're talented, but when strangers buy from you. So the other teacher at school asked her. We went back. We're still just dating. And she made six more, mm -hmm. took them to school, sold them all. So she said, I want to make some now and take them to shops. Well, I don't think about going to shops because I do big pieces of sculpture and I studied in Europe and that's ticky tacky. She doesn't listen. She still doesn't. So she made another dozen. Uh -huh. I drove her. We went to some shops and uh, she went back the next day, went to some more. So when she came home, she had all dozen of her bunny mm -hmm. rabbits. And I said, aha, nobody bought them, did they? She said, no, they ordered them ordered them. She she got said, I said, how many? She said, I think it's 168. Wow. Well, 168 at $10 each got my attention. Yeah, I bet it did. So I gave her some of my magic tools and helped. I delivered five of the six shops we delivered to, mm -hmm. called us back the same day and reordered. Wow. So we started, she designed the cutesy thing that women would relate to because mm -hmm. I'm doing weird stuff that goes in museums but nobody buys. Mm. <laughs> so we were looking to make uh, money instead of making a point. We were trying to make a profit. Right. She took over and designed, I think she has 340 copyrighted designs now. Wow. And we went nationwide, Disneyland, mm -hmm. Dollywood, mm -hmm. Bush Queen Garden, Wicks and Sticks, Moho, Cracker Barrel. We sold and we did that for about 10 years. You guys are a great partnership. And I thank you for being a partner with me tonight teaching me how to at least do something, <laughs> you know, something that is, is looks like a fish. Showing but off be, your creativity. Well, I thank you so much. And I'm so excited about the fact that you have a show here on Access 21, and we That's hope right. everyone will tune in <laughs> this year and as long as you continue to do it. So thank you for being here oh, with us tonight. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. And we want to thank you for being with us. And please continue to look for Mr. Joe Edwards on the Clay Wright Workshop right here on Access 21, and we'll see you the next time on Simpac Spotlight.